Oh. Boom. There he is. Boom. He is. Boom, boom, boom. There it is, my man. Oh, man. I, I, I love how well you're color coordinated every time. I just am hey, so jealous. You got on a jacket. What's the problem? What do you what? What do you wear? Pink shorts or something under under there? What's, what are we doing? <laughs> Dude, I'm still getting over COVID. I'm not wearing any shorts. Let's be honest. But <laughs> don't worry, it's not going to show. As usual, too much information with Stefan. That's what you should. That's what you should call this podcast. <laughs> I'm going to do a, a clip with every episode where I just do a TMI. And I know we haven't officially started the podcast, but if you throw anything up on IG, throw that up on IG where you share too much information on uh, fr from this podcast. I'm already recording. So we've got, right. we've already yes. got the IG clip in the bank. It. There you go. There it is. There it is. <laughs> I would cheers you, but you know, I, nice. Oh, green. Perfect. Yes, nice. Nice. What is it just H2O or? Just, H, yep, just water. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Getting uh getting myself back into uh into shape. So a lot of water mm. every day now, hitting the gym, mm, trying to hit it five times a week at least. And I picked up rowing now as well. So that's like my new cardio thing right now. Oh, nice, nice. I I never got into rowing, but it seems like it's a it's a full body workout, isn't it? It is. I never got into it either, but my knees are not what they used to be all the years of playing basketball and running track and all that type of thing. So I needed something that was a little more low impact, but it still allowed me to get a sweat going. So, uh, nice. and it's easy to just throw on some headphones and get lost in it. So nice. Nice. Yeah. That's really cool. My wife and I, we are doing a booty popping workout. So not my idea, by the way, I should mention that, but she found this guy on Instagram that has this booty workout program and she's like babe we're gonna do this together and i was like no no we're not and she's like yes we are and i was like yes we are let's do it so no offense your wife is a very attractive woman <laughs> she doesn't really need to do any workouts at all uh you on the other hand what do you need to do a <laughs> booty popping workout for what are we doing here what's i don't know man i don't know i that's not the target muscle for my goals just trying I'm to figure trying out what's going on like, Trying to get upper body, trying to be able to get it up here, not down there. But, but you're in good shape, though. You're, the, you're, I mean, like you work out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do. I mean, for the past, I've been working out four to five times a week for the past five, six years. So, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been, yeah. it's been, it, I mean, it's been various workouts and things like that. And I was going, I was hitting the gym before everything closed. Uh, might go back because after that we were still working out, but we were just doing online workouts. Okay. So, and now we're doing booty building workouts. And so that might be the line. <laughs> yeah. 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 The wife is getting up at four 30 and hitting the gym now at five in the morning, to do some workout she's doing some <laughs> hit CrossFit because she's trying to get her, her body back as well. She used to run marathons and so, and all that kind of stuff. So she's trying to get back. I don't know if she'll ever run marathons again, but she wants to get back, you know, to that type of shape by the summer. So she's working her ass off uh, to do it. And, and I'm, I'm just a fanatic about it. Even when I'm on the road doing shows, I, no matter how late I'm up the night before I get the next morning, I always hit the gym. So I'm just a fanatic about it anyway. That, yeah, that's crucial for me too. I just feel like it's the best start to a day where it's like, I'm, I'm still groggy. And I, I'm just, if I don't get to it then, or if I get to it, then it's like this one accomplishment is already done and I'm allowed to just keep grinding. And well, she's an early morning, go hit the gym. I, I, I'm, I really like to hit the gym to like late afternoon, but if I'm on the road, I'll get up in the morning and go do it. Cause you know, when you're on the road, my day, there's so many other things you gotta do for your day. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Is it easier for you at a certain time or you're just like, I can do it whenever I can, I can do it whenever, like I said, I'm in such a routine. Uh, it, my, my time for the gym will differ depending based on home or the road. But I'm in such a routine either way. That's it's just simple for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely a morning guy. But with this, I, I wish I would stop talking about this booty building workout. We do it in the evening times. So <laughs> I think I just want to keep saying it so I can see your face every time I say it. I'm trying to get better about not laughing at you about it. So keep saying it. <laughs> every time you say it, it allows me to practice. <laughs> booty. What is the booty popping building? It's like, yeah, it's something the booty popping, 
build out or something like I that. I will say this, though, because I said this before. Again, no disrespect. Your wife is a very attractive woman. So, yeah, anything she tells you to do, you better be on top of that. See, that's that's why I say yes. <laughs> it's like, just, just don't leave me. <laughs> yes dear yes dear i will i'd love to do this booty popping workout with you. anytime your woman starts working out that's when you need to start submitting more <laughs> to what <whatever> she wants <laughs> <laughs> oh man i might have to get into the rowing though because dude but like both of us our knees aren't what they used to be either yeah, yeah. so yeah yeah it's, it's it's been great for me and running i used to love running so much again that was something i could just get lost in and mm -hmm. uh, and rowing allows that same thing for me, just to get lost in it and just just roll for thirty minutes, for forty five minutes, or whatever. So it's good. Nice, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, what do you say we crack open a new yeah. episode of a comedy advice podcast? This guy, you're so dramatic. Let's 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 go ahead and crack open another episode <laughs> of, of the comedy advice podcast. <laughs> oh man. The aroma oh, smells the, uh, wonderful. Hold on, let me get my cat. I feel like I should be petting my cat. What are you saying? <laughs> uh, hello, everyone, and welcome okay. to another episode oh. of the Comedy Advice Podcast. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, man. Well, welcome, everybody. My name is Stefan Zatani, your host, and joining me today, very special guest. He's a podcaster. He's a comedian. He's a writer. He's an actor. He's a multi-hyphenate, talented individual and, uh, and like a rower. And a roar. <laughs> and a roar, Yes. And a roar. Everybody, please go into an uproar for Sydney Smith. Yeah. yeah say hello to my cats. <laughs> kitty, kitty killer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely going to CGI in one of those for the, for the IG clip. I, I look forward to seeing that. Do that. Do that. <laughs> but I want people to know why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because of the weird thing he said to me just before. We were cracking open. He was super dramatic, as only Stefan can be. And so I felt like I feel like I needed to do this. Oh man. Thanks I for just, having well, me. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Twice. Oh, an absolute pleasure, Sydney. And you gotta up the drama when you've got someone as good as you, which I just finished watching. Oh, go ahead. Were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was gonna say thank you for saying someone as good as me. I am awesome. So I appreciate you noticing. <laughs> <laughs> but I have noticed since our last time we I was on, dude, you've you've upped your games. You have had some amazing guests on. Uh, have you? Was that your second or third time having Adam Ray on? Because you had time. him. On. Yes, and Adam Ray, he's he's killer, such a killer dude. I've had the pleasure of working with him a couple of different times. But nice. you've had some killer guests on, man, since the last time I was on. So kudos to you. Applause to you. Oh, thank you. I, I definitely appreciate that. And you know what? It was because it's funny you mentioned Adam Ray, because that's how I found out about you. Because I went to go see him perform and you were sharing the stage with him. And I was like, that's right. Dude. That's right. That's right. And my wife was like, You got to get that guy. What's his name? I was like, Sydney. And she's like, Come on. After our booty building workout, you can get your big booty over there and ask him to be on your <laughs> podcast. And I was like, Okay. <laughs> But um, I, I do, I definitely appreciate it. And I feel one of the reasons that I really respect you is the last time we talked, we talked a lot about just building our craft and following our yeah. passions and treating the things that we're passionate about if we are serious about them, right. like a business. And yeah. I feel like you do such a good job of that. And I recently witnessed all of the splendor of the Sydney, the Sydney Smith show in Phoenix, a stand up live in phoenix yeah 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 you guys came out killer lineup i mean i i had never seen anthony a before i had him on the podcast after he, I, he, I, uh, I, yeah i saw that too yeah Good he guy. was phenomenal yeah. uh randy valerio who i had never heard of but also hilarious comedian huge yeah, too good, I mean, good good buddy of mine and he travels with uh i can't remember the headline he travels with he's gonna kill me next time he's in town he's gonna he's gonna kill me uh, nice, I'm sorry. Nice. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. And then uh, many others, and then you as well, headlining, and you Thanks. killed, man. It was Thanks, man. so good. Thanks, man. It was it was a good night. It was uh, 200 people on a Wednesday night. I was super happy with that. That 200 people come out for a show on a Wednesday night. That was that was killer. So that was spectacular, man. I mean, I've been to stand up live several times in the past couple of months, and I that was one of the most times or that was one of the most packed I've seen. And it was like, you said a Wednesday night, which was incredible. Yeah. And I think it just really goes to show one, how talented you are. And then also I feel like you did such a good job 
at marketing it where it was like, okay, come out and see the show. Um, it, it was frequent, but it wasn't like all up in your face and, and pushy. So I thought you, you did an awesome job with that. And I was going to ask, Thanks. I mean, how do you come up with, do you have like a marketing plan? And are you like, uh, okay, got a show coming up here are the venues that I'm going to promote it. Cause I, you were also on the, the, um, on the radio too and yeah, yeah. social yeah. media, everything. It just seems like you should be a marketing director. I mean, <laughs> you are of yourself, but the, 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 the radio stuff was a blessing, um, kind of came mm -hmm. out of nowhere. So I can't take credit for that. That was Anthony a, uh, nice. who put that together for me and, and, uh, and, and allowed that to happen. So I won't take credit for that. But as far as my marketing in general, I, the one thing I try not to do is step on myself. So again, like I was mm -hmm. saying before we started, I feel blessed that I'm one of the comics in this scene that, that gets a lot of work. So uh, I'll post or I'll, I'll put a lot of things up on my website, but I won't blast it all over because what I don't want to do, at least for me, I don't want to step on the, the show that's coming up with shows that are coming after. I want you to come out to the show to say, I have Sydney Smith show actually this Sunday uh, at, at, at Stand Up Live. I want you to come to that show, even though there's dates coming behind it. And then I'll start to push those shortly thereafter. And then, I mean, I, you say it's not all up in your face. Sometimes I feel like I might be. So I'm, I'm glad you're saying that I'm getting it from your standpoint because I am every couple of days putting it out there. And it's a little worrisome because you don't want to uh, off, put, put anybody off with it. But at the same yeah. time, when you yeah. see what the clubs actually do, when you see what D.L. Hughley and those guys do when they're coming to town, they're constantly pushing, constantly pushing. So that's what I, I try to do. I try to come up with different ways so that you're not seeing the same thing visually every time. Um, taught myself how to use Adobe Premiere and I've known how to use nice. Adobe Photoshop for a long time. So I'm always just trying to come up with still different ideas from other comics that I respect still ideas from their IG, still ideas from how they promote it commercial wise or whatever, and implement that myself just so that you're hopefully not seeing the exact same thing every single time. Nice. And I think it is well, and there's always that question, especially when I'm trying to promote things too. I'm like, am I overstepping here? And I think there is a line, but I think sometimes it's difficult to tell because maybe I might be different from somebody else, but it's, right. I consume a certain amount of content and then there's just so much out there that going a little bit over, I feel like is better than going a little bit under in some it, cases, because and it's, it's easy to get lost in a lot of it too, because like you're saying, yes. there's, there's so much out there. The other thing I like to do yeah. is sometimes I'll, I'll throw th different things out at different parts of the day uh, just to see mm -hmm. what the likes will get. So a lot of people will throw things up and their feelings get hurt if they don't get a ton of likes on it. Well, for me, that's just me. Okay. Now I know that, this time of day doesn't work for me, or I know that this type of promotion doesn't work for me at this time of day. So a lot of times it's just me testing things out for future shows that are coming down the road sometimes as well. Oh man, that's super smart. That, that's really cool. And, and that's another example too of where <laughs> you can, and I feel like a lot of people, if they don't get a lot of likes, they just like, oh no, it didn't work for me. But you take it a step further and you're like, well, that's just not the right time of day. And I think that testing is, is a really good thing to be able to do and learn from as you're promoting, as you're posting things that you want in front of people that you can learn a lot from with social media. So I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. And what I, and what I, <laughs> I have a few hours and days that I've, I'm aware that things normally get more likes for me. Right. So if I really have right. something I want people to see, it definitely goes up at that time of day at that hour. So that's really cool. And I mean, I think that you are really good and you have a talent for being able to connect with people because another thing is of your many podcasts that we will speak of in a second, but the first one, now that's debatable with, yeah. with your co-host Stan and Dion, you do a Deanna great job. Warren of, now. Deanna Warren now, Deanna Warren now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 no worries. Stan, Stan uh, hasn't been a part of it for, for maybe a month. So, so don't worry about it. But has, it wasn't like his last year or anything. So yeah. Oh, got it. Got it. Oh, thank God. Um, but <laughs> I was going to say, you do such a good job <clears throat> of also including people. It's not just a podcast where you can listen. That's an option. And yeah. you can listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Link in My show man. notes. My man. But um, <laughs> you, you, you can also attend live. And yeah. every time I see it, there's always a lot of people that are commenting and sharing and everything. So I feel like you do such a good job of being able to bring people in 
talk about things that are important and, and things that people want to talk about and share their opinions on, and then also provide the value that you and your co-host do with your opinions. So I think Matt, that's thank really you. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to ask too, with the, the going live and, and, and I, I think you had just started that when we had last spoke, or maybe yeah. you were going to start it, but I, I was going to ask, what did how did the idea kind of percolate and how did it spark in your mind and are you gonna are you gonna do that with the new podcast that you have out or are you gonna keep that structure unique to this one yeah, uh, so with the with, with the not as debatable i wanted something where people could have actual actual open dialogue okay. i'm a person who enjoys having conversations with people even yeah. if you don't agree with me i'm not sure if i shared this last time I'm a guy or a kid at the time who sat down in boot camp with another kid who told me that, and, a, and another black kid, he told us he didn't yeah. like black people. And while my buddy wanted to fight this guy, I wanted, I wanted to talk to this guy. And yeah. this guy and I sat down 17, 18 years old, whatever we were at the time, for three hours on a Sunday. And he explained to me where he came from and why he didn't like black people and where he got that from, how he came about being taught. and. I got this from my dad and my uncles and my grand. This is just how this is just how it was for him growing up where he grew up. And I got to share my experiences and where I was from. And I'm sure at that point in time, neither one of us got up and walked away, you know, feeling like we changed one or the other. But I felt educated about it. And so that's what I wanted now that's debatable to be in the first place, is why I titled it what it is. That's why I wanted the Facebook Live. While the Facebook Live thing, sometimes I feel like it hinders the show a little bit. I feel like it's mm -hmm. still an important part because like you were saying, so many different people come together. We're able to express these views. Uh, I'm a conservative. My buddy Dion is a socialist. And then my, and now the, our new co-host Warren is a Democrat. So you get so many different things. And I think that's what we're missing in this country for a large part. Uh, mm -hmm. Too many people are only, I only want to hear what I already feel like I heard in my head. And so you can't advance that way as an individual and you definitely can't advance that way as a country. You can't advance that way as neighbors. Uh, so I, that's just something I wanted to make sure we have open dialogue for everyone. I love that. <clears throat> and I love that people are sharing it and people are interacting there because I agree a hundred percent where we're not all going to have the same views. Right. Unfortunately, it may, we may get that illusion based off of algorithms with search engine, uh, not search engines, but Facebook and social no, media, where it's like, I'm in this bubble now with everybody that agrees with me. And so I think it's shifted a little bit how we have discussions and conversations, because when we're in our bubble, it seems like we feel comfortable yelling our opinion. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like preaching to the choir. And then when mm -hmm. somebody opposite the, with opposite views comes along then we're s using that same behavior and it's causing us not to have the discussion that i can't remember if we had those types of discussions before or not but um I, I feel like we should get there and i feel like this is a really nice representation of what should be well <clears throat> you know and you can bring this back whenever you want to bring this back but i want to make sure i say this yeah. because i've been trying to really yeah. push push my thoughts on this I really want people out there to understand that while racism exists, and I'm a black man who's lived in, who was born and raised in this country in my entire existence, so I understand it exists. Yeah. The bigger issue we have in this country is classism. And that's the bigger issue. A byproduct mm. of understanding that would be having finding some type of actual solution for racism, for, uh, for, for sexism, for so many other isms that are out there. I want us to understand that for the 99 or 95% that are on the bottom of that 1% or that 5%, however you want to look at it, we're right. all the same. If you think because your skin color is white, that that, that, that billionaire or the, or, or, or the Murdoch family or, or the Koch brothers care any more about you than they, were, than they do about someone who's black, you're fooling yourself. This is a class system. We're all being fucked the same way. And the minute that we all can figure that out, which scares them to death, but the minute we can all figure that out, the only thing scarier for those people than what happened on January 6th at the Capitol, which made me cry, by the way, but the only thing scarier to that 1% than that is if all those people had been a diverse group. That's the only thing scarier to them, if that had been a diverse group. Because now you can't get on MSNBC. You can't get on CNBC. 
or MSNBC uh, or, or CNN, I'm sorry, or Fox mm -hmm. News and play the race card. So I want people to understand out there, if you, if you can hear my voice, just think about it. Just think about it. We're all being fucked the same way. I don't care if you're transgender. I don't care if you're a woman. I don't care if you're a man. I don't care if you're purple. I don't care if you're Hispanic. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're black. We're all being fucked the same way. And the minute we all can figure that out and come together as the 99%, we're scared the shit out of the 1%. And, and again, finding solutions for sexism, racism, and so many other isms and so many other phobias, we will finally find those solutions as a byproduct of understanding that this is a classism situation in this country. That was that was a lot, but that was very, very good. I'm letting it soak into my soul for a second. It's, <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> it, it is good. No, and, and I feel like you're absolutely right, too, because <clears throat> I feel like the lack of knowledge, the lack of education allows a small per percentage of people to give the larger percentage of people the illusion that they have different types of problems or that they are not controlling them. And right, right. It, it's a really, it's almost an inspirational quote. We're all getting fucked the same way. We've all, I mean, no matter what color or if we're trans or whatever orientation we are, we've all got one hole that can be fucked by the 1% and it, it's gaping right now. And I feel like once we, um, you know, all come together and realize that, I think that that could help solve a lot of problems. Just, I put it more graphically than you did. I apologize. No, I know. I like, I, no, I like the way you did it, but I, yeah, but it is just very important. Just who, who's controlling what you watch on MSNBC yeah. and Fox news and CNN and so on and so forth. And what, and, and, and what do they have to gain from that? Making money off the fact that your eyeballs lock in and you actually believe this nonsense that they that they express to you every single day, 24 hours a day. And they all have their own echo. MSNBC loves to push the race card. Fox News loves to push the race card, but also try to be play conservative because they have the old folks who watch them. CNN likes to pretend like they sit somewhere in the middle, but they sit on whatever side they feel like sitting on, depending on who's on the screen. You just you had just these are just things you have to pay attention to and pay attention to who owns these companies. Again, going back to it, the Koch brothers own so many different things that control what people think. Uh, the Murdoch uh, brothers, control, or, or the Murdoch family, they control so many different things, newspapers, Fox News, so on and so forth. It is mm -hmm. disgusting to not educate yourself beyond what those talking heads tell you. It's disgusting. Right. And, and it's disgusting not to look for information just beyond that. And, and they know so many of us won't. So that's why they're yeah. allowed to do what they do. But um, I, like I said, I don't wanna get too far sidetracked, but if people are listening to me, just understand we're all getting fucked the same way. No one has any worse than anybody else. Uh, we're all being played against the middle and we need to figure out how not to allow that to happen. So. Yes, yes, exactly. Well, killing it with that message. And speaking of killing it, wanted to talk about your podcast. Wow, what a great transition. Man, oh, this guy, this guy. Pause <laughs> break for Stefan. <laughs> Murderous, um, which I've listened to. I started listening to the first episode and then okay. the last episode. Okay. And okay. I've also saw the, the number of reviews that you've gotten in like four weeks incredible it's uh how well first off yeah it's a true crime podcast it's all focusing on women murderers yes. Yes. which i, I want to ask about in a second but first off what gave you the idea or what gave you the the push to want to do a true crime podcast i've been wanting to do one for uh, a couple of years now but i am uh, always of the mindset of i want to do something but how can i do it different yeah. uh you know, I think we all, and you know this, being a podcaster yourself, the one thing that we struggle with as podcasters at this point, because how long has this podcast been? How long have you been working this one? Three years. Right. And podcasting has been around a lot longer than that. So yeah, that when you want to do a podcast, you're like, oh, I think I want to jump in that genre. But there's already so many out there. So how do I make mine different? How do I make it different from the graphics? How do I make it different from the title of it? How do I make it different from the subject matter? How do I make it different from the presentation of it, you know, the yes. interview style, yes. so on and so forth. Yes. So I'm always trying to dissect other podcasts and how could, what, what are they doing that I do like? What are they doing like I don't like? What can I take? And then at the end of the day, how can I make mine different? How can I draw hopefully eyeballs to it? And so right. the one thing doing some of my research that wasn't really out there, there weren't many at all, but podcasts where they focus just on women. 
And then when you really dug into those, I don't think there's one outside of mine and um, and Jamie and my cold Jamie Kamire where there's two men that do it. And so I said, let me, you know what? Let me jump out here. Let me try this. It's what everyone isn't doing, though it's in the same genre, true true crime comedy. And um, and there it is, man. But it took me a couple of years to, to come up with the come up with the vehicle to do it. Nice. Well, hey, the vehicle is uh, a glamorous ride, if you will. Thank and, you. Thank you. And, and I mean, I, I think you guys had mentioned it in the fifth episode when you were like, hey, it's all all of the, the reviews are five stars. Yeah. And no one has complained about your guys' voices yet or or <laughs> whatever. But, which, uh, I mean, seriously, though, the, the production value is great. I, when I was listening, I usually, I have a little bit of a, because I know I'm listening to something for free. So right. unless it's just horrible sound quality, I'll bear it. I'll, I'll, I'll um, you know, just listen through and uh, maybe I'll be like, oh, they could do better. But listening right. to you guys, one, I think the sound quality is great. Two, I feel like you guys have, a, you and Jamie have a good chemistry with each other too, because I don't feel like there's too much talking over each other. I feel like it's a good balance of each other. And so um, bravo is what I'm trying to say. Thanks, man. Jamie Kamir, my, my co-host, my brother, I've known him for 10 years since he got here from Boston. And the reason I tease him about his voice is because he hates it, but he sounds just like Ted uh, from, from uh, the bear from the movie, Ted, or, if you, or, or Peter Griffin, if you will, which is the same guy doing the same yeah. voice, but yeah. uh, that's who he sounds like. So he hates it. He hates what people said. That guy sounds like uh, Peter Griffin. So that's why I always fuck with him about it, about the sound of his voice. But we do. We've been friends for a long time. We've had a couple of different ventures we've tried to do together. We we opened up a comedy club together a few years nice. back. And so we have a good rapport. He and I talked about that actually at one point that we just, we have our, our you know, you can have roles in a friendship or a relationship without ever defining those roles. You know, you mm -hmm. subconsciously just have them. I'm very, I am very much alpha and he's not. <laughs> so so we, I can see that. So it's a, it's a it is a good mesh in that sense, um, mm -hmm. and and I bring my skill set of strengths, and he brings his, and it just works out. And so far, it's been good. We've enjoyed it. We got some great episodes. My favorite episode probably so far has been episode two, because uh, that story is just that woman was just man. She was she was nasty, man. She was vicious, but it's been good so far. Oh, that's awesome. I would. Oh, I uh, I don't have the page up anymore, but. Uh... Episode two, okay. I'll put that one in the show notes for the. Yeah, yeah. You check it out. Let me know what you think of it too. You got to listen to it, man. It is this one was something vicious, vicious. <laughs> oh man, vicious. nice. I, I will. I listen and then I will leave a review. And uh, you know, I well, may or may you. not talk about Jamie's voice. So no. we'll see. <laughs> I will say this too, uh, in reference. I'm I'm stepping on you. I feel like I apologize. Uh, in terms of ratings and reviews, everyone's been so nice. I didn't know if that was a lot of ratings to get within the first month. I didn't, you, you, you said that's a good amount of ratings, so I'll take that. Um, yeah, I think we've got 32 ratings the last time I looked, all five stars, and seven reviews the last time I looked, too. And I've been so appreciative of people supporting it uh, in that way. Dude, I mean, that's like a rating a day. That's pretty incredible. I think I might get one or two every one or two weeks so gotcha. that's dude that's like 365 reviews in a year if you get it so uh, yeah I, I i hope we can keep this pace up but the cool thing about it is we outside of saying it which you're supposed to say in your podcast hey leave us a, a rate and review so on and so forth right I, it's, it hasn't been a whole lot of calling and text message. Hey, give us a, or us getting on and right. breaking these things. It, it's just people legitimately right. digging it and leaving their thoughts. And you know, I'm just, I'm just super happy about that. So. That's awesome. That's really cool. Uh, you know, I also, I don't know if you do it at the end, but one of the things that I've started to do is instead of intros, I've recorded after the episode an outro because I'm thinking, Oh, somebody just listened to the episode and if they made it all the way through, I'll add their, hey, leave a review. Even if I'll say it at the beginning, I'll say it again at the end because um, then they're ready. Maybe they're moving on with their day or whatever. And like, oh yeah, I'll just leave a, a nice little review. So I've seen an uptick in reviews from that. But yeah, def you know, definitely doing it at the beginning and the end. Absolutely. Yeah. But it sounds like, you know, you guys don't really need that since you're doing great already. Uh, but it's, it just started, man. I'll be hitting you up for tips soon. <laughs> 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 just started. 
Oh man. Uh, but anyway, I also wanted to ask really quickly before we get into the advice, uh, yes. wanted to ask about your new show. Is it three for three? Did I get that right? Or am I? Yeah. Three for three. We, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's more of a game show. I wanted more of a game show to produce. Uh, and I'm more in the hosting slot for that. And this is, uh, we did it last summer. Uh, let's say last spring, just before everything went crazy. Okay. Did it at the temp- actually while wow, everything was kind of going crazy before you shut everything down. Did it at Tempe Improv, had a great turnout for it. Uh, got to work some kinks out, got to see what worked, what didn't work. And it's three for three. And it's nice. three different teams of three of comics, three, three different comics or three different teams. And uh, each team gets, <clears throat> at the very beginning, they get a certain uh, amount of, of, of blind topics. And then mm-hmm. they have to write jokes. Each one of them has to write a set based off of what, they, what they've been given. And then they got to come up and perform it. And we just kind of, and, and, and it works its way dwindling down from there, but it's three for three. And yeah, I, I dig it. Uh, it's a game show. It's something I really, <laughs> it's something I've really been wanting to work on something I've been really wanting to do. So looking forward to getting back to that coming up. So. Oh man, I'm really excited for that. Cause that's uh, that sounds like a lot of fun, both for, I mean, if, you, if you're a comedian and you're just really in the rhythm with solidified material and you're, you're not feeling the thrill as much anymore that'll sh- shock your senses right it'll, sh- it'll shock your sense- system and there's money that's given to the team that wins so if you don't do your part for your team then you get points deducted from your squad so you can hurt your team so you can't get up here you're supposed to do five minutes of material on let's say tape measures and get up here and you do three and a half or four and decide you're just going to bail well, now you're going to get points deducted from your squad because, and so now you're hurting your entire team. So it's not every man or woman for himself. Uh, and then at the end, the whole team gets the cash prize, but the best comic from that team gets to uh, close out the show with the five minute set. And nice. so it, it was, it was, it was, it was really good. I was proud of it. I hadn't done anything like that before as far as producing anything like that before the audience enjoyed it. And I had so many comics that came out that came up with me, how can I be a part of this next time you do it? So that always feels good when you produce something that comics want to be a part of. That's awesome, man. Do that, by the way, do the teams, do they wear a blue, is there a blue team with blue shirts and a red team with red shirts? I, I thought about doing that uh, initially because initially I was just going to uh, make, make the teams the same team every single time. Uh, but I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to bring in different, different comics every time and, I don't just to have a bunch of shirts for whatever size doesn't make a lot of sense for me. So we'll see. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Just remind you could get those old mesh jerseys that they had oh, in the PE class. Black, oh, oh, black football mesh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome to the cheapest show ever produced. <laughs> three for three. <laughs> no budget at all. So everyone's wearing fishnets, different color fishnet stockings on their face. <laughs> It could, I mean, if you want to go even lower budget, you could do shirts versus skins. Uh, that could be another. You, you trying to get me run out of this town, man. <laughs> you ruined my whole career based on your ideas. <laughs> yeah, please don't take that advice. Sydney canceled. It will be the yeah, next. Uh, uh, right. Oh, cancel culture is, is waiting for a reason to cancel you. <laughs> so, yes. You know, All right, did you fair. know, Sydney, one of my titties out? It just wanted to be just like that. <laughs> No, Sydney would never say that. He said he got the idea from Stefan. That, that just did his out. Oh shit! Oh man, I'm going down too. Cancel. Uh, you, you don't think I'm? You don't think I'm taking this ride by myself, do you? Dude, it's. I know it's recorded now too. So it's out in the universe, basically. I, I don't want to go back and hear any beeps, bleep, bleeps on, on this portion of the podcast. I'm just gonna, yeah, edit out that. You should definitely not do shirts and skins. <laughs> That's right. No, see, I see what you did <laughs> Oh man. Well, I'm really excited for that show. I'm really excited for the Sydney Smith show, which is this Sunday, this Sunday, uh, stand up live doors open at six show starts at seven, go to Sydney Smith creative. And that's going to be creative. It's going to be spelled C R E the number eight T I B.com. Get your tickets. Like I said before, we had a couple hundred people in the building last time I'm shooting for 300. I I feel like, I feel like I'm going to get there. Uh, so get your tickets early. Nice. Oh, super excited. And the link is going to be, in the show notes so you guys right. can just click right there for the tickets just go there's there no go. excuse not to go that so. is right oh man all right sometimes i have to be a little stern with my listeners i, I heard it i heard it. yeah i heard it 
<laughs> Stern. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to dive into some self-help and advice. And right. I think you know the drill before we get into the questions. We've got an inspirational quote lined up. But, Sydney, I know you You actually – was it two quotes that you had last time? I can't remember. But you had some pretty good ones. But I wanted to ask, do you have any more inspirational quotes that you'd like to dole out to <sighs> – the lucky audience you know it's funny you asked that because i did not have one but you made me think of something i just said on not as debatable uh last night actually because uh it came up with the whole thing that happened last week i'm not sure if you're aware or if your listeners are even aware about what sharon osborne did and how she reacted on no the, no on the i, I, the I talk. what what happened there so she was defending pierce morgan who does not believe what Meghan Markle had to say about feeling like she was going to kill herself uh, with everything that was happening when she was living over in, at, in the Royal Palace. Uh, and so he voiced that he didn't believe her. Little did I know there's some, there's some side beef with Pierce Morgan has with Meghan Markle where she ignores him now. She was, he was a part of her clique and now she's, he's not. So there's this whole side thing that he had for her. But he says that uh, some of his co-hosts push back on him. He storms off the show. And then word comes out, he will be leaving that show. And, and Sharon Osborne said, hey, uh, I don't necessarily agree with you. Not saying I don't agree with you, but you do have a right for free speech and all these different things. And Cheryl Underwood, who's a wonderful comedian, wonderful, wonderful comedian, who's also a co-host on the show, African-American, pushed mm-hmm. back on, I would sit there and say push back, just ask for a follow-up question, which is, yeah. How do you expect people to hear that and not feel like you're not supporting a racist or racism? And I'm paraphrasing here, folks. So, uh, yeah. And then it just turned into this whole thing where Sharon kind of went off on Cheryl uh, and, and told her, uh, show me how I'm being racist. Don't you dare cry right now. And all these different other things. And it just turned into a whole thing. Dang. Later on, someone must have got to Sharon Osborne and got in her ear because she went on Twitter and threw this apology up. Uh, again, I'm paraphrasing Sharon Osborne. I'm not racist. I don't see how anyone could ever. But if I ever, if I offended, I'm so sorry. And then blah, 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 blah. All the usual shit. Uh, and that just made me think the thing that I always think, which is why are people so readily available to bash someone in public? But your apology needs to be on Twitter or in secret. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so I guess my, my, my loose quote here is mm-hmm. if you're going to embarrass or or bash someone in public, be sure that your apology is done in public as well. Mm, that's a good point. So I guess I should say sorry right now for the TMI instead of tweet it later. So okay, you should. You should. And also, you can apologize now for trying to get me canceled by asking me <laughs> half naked women on stage. I already had my producer drum up a draft for a tweet. So, okay, I, I apologize, Sydney. It'll never happen again. And not to leave anyone else out, you should also apologize for wanting the out of shape male comedians to take their shirts off too, because nobody needs to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for everyone with titties to, please, I'm sorry. I, Harry and Nan, all right? <laughs> so, get that squared but, away. Uh, yes, I apologize to the titty community. So. <laughs> titty <laughs> community. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, that is that is actually a pretty good inspirational quote because even before you said it, where you said she went to Twitter to apologize, I was just thinking, oh my god, this is uh, what have we come to? What have we come it, to? I mean, you just got you. You have to be an adult, man. And I think it's even more important. I said this last night too. Let me just add this real quick. I think it's just yeah. as or even more important to do that with children. Because so many times adults will be wrong uh, and, and punish a child, whether you're yelling or spanking or whatever in public. And then it's the hugs and the kisses and I'm sorry and I didn't mean it. No, 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 you need to do that because you have really done something to that child at that point when you did that, when you made those actions. So that should be definitely something you do again in public as well, so. That's, that's a good point, not to compare children to dogs, but I was going to say, if there is something that a a dog is doing wrong, you need to correct them in that moment. And they associate that action with the event instead of you wouldn't go home to a dog and be like, you remember when we were walking and you weren't healing? That was bad. You're going to sit in timeout now. You got to be able to 
do it right there and then. So just like that with the apologies, once if you punish the kid or, or mean to them, then apologize to them right then. I, I, I don't, yeah, so nothing like dogs. Uh, but yeah, let me give you this dog <laughs> example. <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, know you, what's wrong with me. It's the, it's the Robitussin. I'm just speaking... All you're, sorts one of of my, dogs right you're one of my favorite people, man. But sometimes I tell you, brother, I mean, you were my favorite. You were at my birthday party. That's how much I enjoy you. <laughs> and, and, but you are, well, I tell you what. <laughs> I know I gotta, I gotta pipe down here. I, uh, oh man. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, we'll move on to the next inspirational quote that we've got. <laughs> it's actually by a robot called Inspirobot. And he right. uses, or she uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man and just mash them together for a tasty inspirational quote. So I'll read this and Sydney, you let me know if this means anything to you. <clears throat> this week, Inspirebot says, the metric system, it's doing exactly what it was designed to do. And it, it, it is designed for me not to give two shits about the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so yes it is doing exactly what it was designed to do absolutely I, I, yeah i think we just figured out where it's firebots from not america the, the, the closest i get the same metric is same meter so <laughs> that's <what it's> in. <laughs> yeah i feel like you know we were talking about being pushy earlier yep. and i feel like yep. the metric system is and people that have the metric system in their country they're very pushy about it Absolutely. and you know what dude let, let us just live with our miles and feet and inches and you just go about your business you be metric we'll be imperial it's the same thing with these people who want me to care about the royal family i don't give two solid fucks about the royal family all right i care as much <laughs> about the royal family as i do about the hard shit I'm, i would take after a night of drinking all right. I don't care. No one cares about your kings to queens, man. All right. No, Let it go. No. You're as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> you're all idiots. All right. You're idiots. What do these people do over there? They do nothing. These are people who could not, they couldn't get a job if you left them on a street corner somewhere. They have no skill set. No skill set. The best thing about the royal family is the Netflix show, The Crown. And you know, the last time I watched that episode of that, fucking a month ago. Let it go. Let it go. No one got naked. The closest thing, the hottest thing I've ever seen come out of that entire family was nothing. All right. Let it go. You're terrible people. You look terrible. The crowd, I'm pretty sure it's about your entire family. You guys are all douchebags. Let it go. Stop following a bunch of douchebags. Stop following a bunch of douchebags. What do they do? So, so let me get this straight. Not only do you have a parliament, then you also have a prime minister for some reason because someone told you God said this is where it should be. Now you have this group of people who are above the prime minister who really don't do anything, but there's a whole allowance for them and many, many homes and jets and, and all kinds of things and, and polo horses, let it go, let it go. See what you did? You brought up the metro system and you made me talk about this stupid ass family. The greatest thing that they had going for them was that a black girl from Compton hustled her way into that family. That is the only thing they had going for them, and they fucked that up. You should have held on to her. Oprah would have been hanging out at the house every fucking Sunday, doing Super Soul Sundays right there at the palace. You <laughs> fucked it up. Oprah would never come over there. Oh, my God. You know, as they say in England, you give them a centimeter, they take a kilometer. So this is what you're doing? Just... This is what you're doing? This is as they say in England? <laughs> <laughs> when I see you, I'm going to hit you with a cup of tea. <laughs> 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 Oh God! Oh, I don't know whether I'm dying or, or well, I'm definitely screw, laughing, but I might. Screw die. that metric system. Screw that country. Screw them people. Damn with the fucking world. <laughs> this is America. Damn it. <clears throat> God, I, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. And now I feel super inspired. Not necessarily from Inspirebot, but kind of inspired <laughs> from Inspirebot from you that inspired me. I'm ready to. Well, let's go down to some bars stuff. and fight people from England when they're watching soccer. Let's go. <laughs> kick some ass that's not cool. I, lo <laughs> I love it i love it this is perfect okay so we're okay. gonna move on to the questions we've got this first one it's found by our fan lewis louis i'm not sure but thank you it says <clears throat> so being the genius that i am i made an only fans account and subscribed to this girl 
not because I want to watch her giving some random guy a blow Jay, but just so I could talk to a real girl and tell her she's beautiful. Basically, she keeps telling me how I made her day and then I made her cry being so kind to her. She also struggles with mental health and that talking to me really helps. The issue is I know that talking to her isn't good for either of us and I'm wasting money for no reason, but I feel bad for just unsubbing with no explanation. Should I tell her why I need to unsub or should I just go ahead and do it? First of all, let me oh. ask you this before I ask this question. Did you say blow J or did he type blow J in there? I don't want to answer that question, but yeah, you said blow J. Why did you say blow J? <laughs> I've said I fuck, thought, motherfucker. I, I've said all kind of shit on this podcast. Before thought, asking this, go ahead, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say I thought maybe it would soften the blow job, but no, oh, I thought. I thought. Thank you. Thank you. Just say blow job, you rat bastard. Look, with Louis Lewis. How about loser? How about loser? How about we call you loser? <laughs> God. First of uh, all, yeah. why would you have, why would you start this account to pay anybody? Let me tell you something, loser. Uh, if you go to pornhub.com, there is free clips of OnlyFans videos all over the place. All right? Something else I want to tell you. I was watching a documentary not too long ago there, loser. Um, and the documentary, they talked about these different sites. And what a lot of you, you and your fellow losers don't understand is that there are men actually who are doing the typing. All right, this woman is jacking oh, off one no. guy. This woman is jacking off one guy and masturbating with the other hand. Where do you think the other fucking two hands are at that are typing and responding back to you? you when she's got two fucking arms coming out of her ass that you can't see, you think she's messaging you and doing this? There are men who are responding to you and your conversation. Uh, oh. You don't help anything, loser. You know what you help? You help her go down to Scottsdale Fashion Square and buy a pair of Louis Vuitton shoes in a bag. That's what you're helping. You know what? i tell you what you can do there, loser. If you just want to give money away, uh, hit me up, and I will give you a P.O. box that you can send an envelope all your cash to and send it to me once a month, and I can tell you to go <laughs> fuck off because that's all she's telling you to do. Go fuck off. So uh, you're not helping her mental health. If it's bad for your mental health, I would say what will help your mental health is probably actually watching some of those free clips from Pornhub, masturbating, and getting some of that old sexual release out your own body and off your, off your brain. Stop being yeah. a loser, Louis. Stop being a loser, Louis. I said it twice because I don't know what the fuck your name is. But get your life together, loser, and stop fucking looking at OnlyFans with accounts. What kind of bullshit is this? This is stupid. <laughs> this is stupid. Uh, maybe it's yeah. Louis the Third. Is he, he seems like he he would like the royal family and he I'm likes the with, metric system. I'm going with loser, idiot. <laughs> loser the third yeah oh. i i think a free blow job is better than a pay blow job any day of the week and i feel i i did not know about this men behind the wheel it totally makes sense but dude if you are take a load off literally on pornhub xnx you know what those links will be in the show notes too if you want to go there that's fine louis but also yeah if you want to talk to a girl and you you want to, that interaction i don't dude just go to a bar go a tinder go to any there are like so many apps that can help you meet a girl don't there's, go to so, only there's so many women walking around that will give you pussy for free all right i don't know what you are doing with yourself now i will say this in all seriousness though there louis or lewis i won't call you loser on this one i'll say this if you are struggling with mental health issues mm. go see a shrink you idiot <laughs> that's a good time to mention that this podcast is sponsored by better health. If you go to betterhealth.com slash comedy advice podcast, you can get 10% off there your you first six months. That that's my audition to be, uh, to get better health as a sponsor. Oh, is that what that was? I, yeah, I, that was, was sitting here thinking, I was sitting here thinking like, well, this would be the last time better health. Let's, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's sponsor. This podcast. Yeah. They're like, can you please take that off? Stefan canceled. Oh, I, okay. have, I, I have, I have fucked. I have fucked up this sponsor for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was saying blow Jay. I was trying to keep it clean for them. No I'm kidding. Said, blow uh, jobs. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go on to the next segment. And this next segment, it's a new one from when you last came on. It's called Positive Spin. And the reason I have this is a lot of times when bad things happen, people start to think of all the negatives. Oh, no, uh, this bad thing happened to me. And they stop thinking of the positives and they stop thinking about how they can overcome these different situations. So I've got a negative scenario 
and you're going to try and think of some positive for this, Sydney. You ready for this? Boom, let's go. All right. So I actually, I'm going to put a little spin on this since we were talking about it. But so there's a storm at your house. This is almost like 80s movie magic. Lightning bolt strikes your television. Oh, no. But guess what? It survives unscathed. It still works, except when you turn it on, you get none of your regularly scheduled programs. You only get the royal family. Positives. <laughs> Every time you turn on the TV, Harry, Mary, what's her name? Megan, Megan. I like um, to call her rectangle, but yeah, Megan Mark. <laughs> rectangle. She's built like a rectangle, bro. <laughs> I used to watch the show Suits with my wife. My wife said, she's kind of cute. That bitch is built like a rectangle. No, not cute. <laughs> it's, it's true, actually, now that I think about it. Oh, yeah. uh, so I need to find a positive out, out of the fact that when I turn my TV on, all I see is the royal family. Yes. Yes. All, right. okay. all the time. All right. We can make it interesting since it's kind of magic that sparked it, the lightning bolt. It's the royal family, but they're doing whatever activity the channel is designated for. ESPN, they're playing basketball. Um, MTV, they're making a song. They're playing beautiful music. Uh, I don't know any other channel. Comedy Central, they're doing stand-up. No, no. The, the positive is that I learned how to read at an early age. And so there's a lot of, I got a couple books I need to catch up on. Uh, like white fragility. Uh, that might be one I need to catch up on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so. Link will be on the show notes for that too. So uh, so, so there's a positive there. Another positive is um, I can always watch, um, uh, 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 man, any type of movie about the Revolutionary War uh, and get to see where they lost every time. So that would be kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, there's a, so there's a couple of positives, but definitely starting with reading. I got an Obama book in there that I need to be reading. Oh man, I got so much stuff. I got, ah, uh, there's so many other things I could be doing. Or, or, you know, that whole Kate, uh, Prince, uh, what's the what's the older brother, Prince? Uh, oh, uh, William? Yeah, Prince William, that Kate Middleton. Now, she's not a bad looker, so if she could, you know, get her in some compromising sexual positions, because I'm thinking of watching some, some porn stations. Uh, yeah, that might work. Nice. Ooh, her and Rectangle together might not be bad idea so yeah yeah there you go now you gave me some good ideas i got some things to think about tonight rectangle with a strap on there like you go. The, my favorite <laughs> geometry equation that's beautiful <laughs> rectangle with a strap on <laughs> now show your work <laughs> that's the, that's the name that's the name of the show show your work <laughs> i i'm gonna say i am pleasantly surprised with the positives that you came up with so i would say you pla you passed with flying colors that Man, was... is there a buzzer or something I'm supposed to hear? But not... Oh my, I need one. I need one. And Sydney That's... wins. Oh, there you go. I'll, I'll take it for this time, stuff. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll fix it in post. We'll have something better. <laughs> all right, so the last... <laughs> the last question. It comes to us from Reddit, found by our fan, Ted. Thank you, Ted. It says, assistance phone ring is annoying. My assistant manager's phone rings every now and then, and it's not a constant annoyance, but when it does ring, it just goes right through me. Two lower, two lower toned rings, and then two higher toned rings. She's older, so the volume is higher than you would normally think for an office too. I'm the new manager, and she's been here like 16 years, knows the president of the company, beloved by all, etc. I'm not a bossy person, but this is really getting on my nerves. Any advice is welcome. Thanks. What's the name of this person? I'm sorry. Uh, well, Ted sent it in. Okay. Uh, Ted, um, sounds like you are a bossy person, actually. Sounds like you have some good, <laughs> sounds like you have some control. How does a ringtone bother you to the point? Ted, I feel like you would fire this woman if you had the power. I'm glad that your power is limited, Ted. Leave this poor woman alone. What are we talking about here? Ted, what is your job, actually? Don't you have work Ooh. to do? Don't you have That's things a to do? Huh? That's it, a Good question. Are you in an office space, possibly? Can you put some headphones on? Are you supposed to be at your laptop? Isn't that shit you should be concentrating on when you can't listen to someone? Ted, you sound like you have an issue. Anytime I hear someone say, uh, I'm not really a whore, that means that person's a whore. Just like anytime I hear someone say, I'm not a controlling person. Uh, go back and read what you wrote. Go back and read what you wrote. 
Just like I would tell anyone who says they're not a whore, uh, you got dicks in your hand when you say that. So I need you to go back and read what you wrote. You are a controlling person, you have issues. You and loser uh, need to go get a Groupon and go get a two for one with a trick. Both of y'all need to get, seek some help. Seek some help. I love, again, sponsored by Better Health. Dot oh com slash gosh. comedy advice podcast. Her ringtone bothers me. Oh, she's beloved by all. That that sounds like if she wasn't, I'd choke the shit out of this bitch in the parking lot. I'd kill her. I would kill her in this phone. That's what it sounds like. So no, it, 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 did. Exactly. Exactly. And I feel like if she's beloved by all, it sounds like the problem is with you. And I, Sydney, you really rang true on this one when you said, if somebody says, I'm not really something, that means they're absolutely something. That's it's exactly just, who you are. They're trying to sugarcoat it. But it's, it's just, oh, oh my God, the ringtone. You couldn't come up with something better? If you told me she ate with her mouth open, I probably would have been with you. Yeah, kill that bitch. But you did. It's a ringtone. Because <laughs> <laughs> nothing drives me crazy to people chew with their fucking mouth open. I agree. I definitely agree with that. And the only thing she... is, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I wasn't going to say anything of value. So. No, no, no. The only thing I was going to say, the only thing that has ever kept me from killing people was the fact that everyone I wanted to kill was beloved by all. So, so I'm going to go, <laughs> go, get some, go get some help, Ted. You sound like a lunatic. She yeah, get so, yeah, exactly. Meditate, maybe do some sleep sounds when you sleep. Ooh. The sleep sounds could be the ring, just at a lower volume so you get used to it. I think that- Here's one. Here's one. Go find another job. Quit. Let her be the manager. Leave. And on the way out, fuck you and your ringtone, Ruth. Fuck you and your ringtone and just leave. I, yeah, yeah. And then the, the, the future employer. Yeah, why were you seeking to get another job? Well, have you ever had somebody that has a really annoying ring? No, I'm sorry, Ted. I haven't. We'll um we'll be in touch, and then yeah. you know maybe you can understand how ridiculous you sound. He sounds like with an this insane person. Ringing. Insane. Go yeah. see you and loser. Go get that shrink. Yeah, there, oh, there you go. Man. Sync man. up, sync up, and then maybe you guys can can get shrinky together. Betterhealth.com/slash comedy advice podcast. Ten percent off. <laughs> did that did not go to sponsor this after today. <laughs> You should, well, in our in our in our pre-show uh, talk, you probably should have mentioned that you were trying to get better health. I probably would have curbed some things, but yeah, they're not going. <laughs> yeah. It's over. It's over. I've ruined that for you. You might. No, it's it's all good. I will I will survive. And you know what? If things don't work out, I will go to betterhealth.com slash comedy advice podcast, whether I get a discount or not, and then I can seek my health. See, see if OnlyFans will sponsor you. Maybe OnlyFans will sponsor you. You know. Uh, you know. That that's pretty good. They might actually, if I learn how to say blow job without giggling, I think that maybe they'll, they'll hire me or do, do me that. And maybe they'll give you a job. You can all be over there answering some of the losers questions when he's like chief editor. Yeah. Oh, you make my day. Oh, thank you, Louie. Oh, <laughs> do, do I owe her an explanation? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, this is this is ridiculous. You really never want to see how the sausage is made, especially when it comes to OnlyFans. Hey man, hey, hey! I had a hard time at uh, Rite Aid. I was I was a member, had the little card, and I wanted to start going to Walgreens, and I wasn't sure who do I should I talk to? Do I need to break it this off? How does this work? Oh, it was very very much like loser. It was very tough for me to break off with Rite Aid without having a conversation with this person. And you know what? Rite Aid didn't give a fuck either. So. <laughs> Move on. Move on. I think I think that's the key, the key theme of this podcast. Just move on. You know what? Move on. When you when you need to apologize, apologize and move on. If you're trying to end things with an OnlyFans girl, move on. If you're annoyed by a ring, move on. Move on. Just move, move on. on. But I had a friend, I won't mention his name because uh he may be listening to this very possibly. I haven't seen this man in many, many years, but uh, I remember we used to go to the strip clubs when we first got out of boot camp and we would go. Yeah. And this guy was a virgin, which I'm thinking Louie is. And the strippers would tell him what strippers tell virgins. Uh, I really like you. Let's go have breakfast. And he really felt for that. He really thought every time we would go, he thought this stripper really liked him and he would give her so much fucking money. But what people don't understand is strippers are the queens of, of, of making you feel whatever you're feeling. If you feel like shit, she's meaning to make you feel like shit. If you feel like you're on top of the world, she means to make you feel on top of the world. If you feel like you just can't quit her, then she's making you feel like that. They are, waitresses are the same fucking way as well. Waitresses, at a, at a, especially at a dive bar. 
you losers out there need to recognize there's two things you don't hit on and worry about strippers and waitresses let it go let it go as you put it move on yeah there you go and you know <clears throat> it made me think strippers they're the rotary phone of only fans it's just that that was the analog version now we're we've gone digital with only fans but strippers i think they used to be the original the ogs and, of and manipulating and they, men and they're still getting it still getting it still getting that money oh God. So, evergreen yes they will be eternal. I think that that's going to be a necessity for society. Hundreds of years from now, there will be you, still strippers. I'm glad you 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 went beyond just saying Evergreen for it. I thought you were saying the name of your favorite stripper. <laughs> oh, oh yes, Evergreen. The bitch Cinnamon got me is too. Actually, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, get your dollar bills together. We got Evergreen coming to the center stage. <laughs> and when I say gentlemen, I mean Stefan. <laughs> i'm already here oh god Fuck. Yeah, I, well you know, you know the crazy thing with strip clubs i know you're trying to close out but real quick you know the no. crazy thing with strip clubs now they've taken all like i used to like to go to the strip club with my buddies and they would sit down by the stage i would sit at the bar with my back yeah. to the stage and just have a drink and maybe chit chat with a couple of strippers that came and sat down next to me yeah. and while they were down there give, because here's my thing i'm getting the same fucking show that they're getting for free so you sit down there and give you give your money away. It just it had never made sense to me. But what they they've done now, they've taken the fucking seats, the bar stools away from the bar. So now you can't do that. Oh no way! Oh man. So now I got to sit down here with the other fucking bums, the homeless guy who fucking waddled in here, and the <laughs> fat guys over here with his shirt where he can't button all his buttons on it. The guy over here who obviously just he still works at Subway, but he's in here balling with his check because it's on the fucking Friday. <laughs> Now I got to sit down here with these losers and have my beer. I got to shoo away these bitches that look like they got flies flying around their pussies. It's ridiculous that I got to do all this. All for hanging out with my buddies. Oh, and look at these sons of bitches. Not only order food at the strip club and eat it with a bitch sitting on his lap, but take takeout home with them. What are you doing? What are you doing? I, we can stop and get chicken wings. Why are you getting strip club chicken wings to take home? What are we oh, doing? Oh, my God. Oh man, what do the doggy bags look like for the to go? Is it just like a pair of titties, but just like a Chinese box? <laughs> I don't know. It's all in, <laughs> they it was stacked up. They ordered a lot of fucking food. So it was all like one of those paper bags with the fucking handles. And it was it was stacked up in there. I don't know what the containers look like because uh I don't eat food uh, that's been touched by the hands because by the guy who's probably jacking off while he's looking at the titties through, through the window and oh shit, the fries are burning. Oh, and so, and so not my, not my. oh. Yeah, the special sauce is not something you want to partake in. Is that mayonnaise? Uh, is that mayonnaise? Are you sure that's mayonnaise? Is that, is that what that is? <laughs> not doing that. <laughs> God, I'm sure it says thank you, come again on the to-go box with the C-U-M. Oh, oh, you did too much. Oh, oh, but, oh sorry. T T M I. Oh, um, oh, if I could open up a strip club, though, that would be so key. That would be so key. If I if I lived in that world, to be open up a strip club, man, the, the way that whole system works, where the, they don't, the owners don't pay anybody, the strippers have to pay out everybody. Strippers have to pay out the, uh, the, the the waitresses. Strippers have to pay out the DJ. And then they got to pay the fucking house. And then they get to walk out with some fucking money to go buy and eat some IHOP on the way home or some shit. Oh, such a great system that those pimps, I mean, I mean, strip, strip club owners have worked out for themselves. You know what? I mean, if we ever do want to go into business together, Sydney, which yeah. definitely could be a possibility. Strip Absolutely. club could be one of those things oh no no we're, no 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 that's dirt, that's dirty money we're not getting into that i'm not that's uh that's still mob money uh <laughs> you go ahead and dig into that business on your own and since and it could be royal family themed since everybody loves them so much and uh we could say coming up rectangle <laughs> that's that sounds like just something for you <laughs> so, so you, me, you know i this, think there's a niche you know what just like you said there are true crime podcast podcasts everywhere there yeah. are strip clubs everywhere but i don't see a single one royal family themed so i feel like uh we'll pay in sterling pounds so we'll use the british currency uh -huh. and people feel like they're at the castle it's, I, I'm, I'm starting to really feel like you have a royal family fetish is what i'm starting to feel like <laughs> you got you, you got some God, make the wife dress up like the fucking queen every fucking other Saturday. Oh my God. Call me Harry, babe. Call me carry, Harry. Carry that fucking what that purse in, right there in your arm bin. I try and role play like, like, uh, what's his name? William, where I just take off all my hair and uh, oh, nice. Ball cap. That's oh, a look God. for you. That's a look for you. Oh. <laughs>
Ugh. On that unsavory note, I think it's a beautiful time to strip off the rest of the episode and uh, come to an end. So first off, Sydney, thank you again for coming back on. It was an absolute pleasure thank to have you. you. Thank you for having me, man. Like I said, if you're getting some killer guests, uh, some people that I definitely have worked with and really appreciate myself and people I haven't had a chance to work with yet, uh, but I know they're killer people through other friends. So getting some great guests, man. And uh, you keep doing what you're doing. I'm glad you can make time for me, so. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. And I just wanted to ask, because my list, you got to be stern with the listeners sometimes, repeat Absolutely. some things. What have you got going on? What would you like to plug? Where can people follow you? All that good stuff. Man, you know what? IG, uh, if you guys could follow me at IG, I would appreciate it. And that's going to be Sydney Smith Creative as well. Again, you're going to spell creative, C-R-E, the number eight, T-I-V. And when you follow me, I normally follow back, but let me know if you are following me because you heard me here. Uh, and then also check out the, the new podcast, Murderous Podcast. M-U-R-D-E-R-E-S-S -S podcast. You can find that where you're listening right now. It's everywhere. If you are listening on Apple uh, podcast and you enjoy it, leave us a great rating and a great review. I would really, really appreciate it. Um, if you listen to it and you don't like it, uh, you know, go fuck yourself. Lewis. <laughs> yes, do not leave a rating or review. Just go fuck yourself. Beautiful. And not with only fans either, you nerd. Don't try, go to, don't try to, don't try to chastise me about what I said to Lewis. That's what you try to, don't try to be stern with me, buddy. <laughs> Just, just, just because you're six foot five, then you'll get to be stern with me, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I, tried. I tried. That's it. You did. You did. Uh, well, thank you so much, Sydney. If you want to hang out with me a little bit after, say goodbye to the audience. Yeah, man. That'd be great. Um, yeah. Audience, you guys have been a real treat to just speak at. And um, I, I will apologize later on Twitter, but I'm also just going to say sorry now in advance for everything. And you guys have been awesome. If you haven't yet, please leave a rating, review, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And then if you're in Phoenix, Arizona, come to the live show, April 10th. And uh, more details will be in the show notes there. This is a packed, this is like a, a nutrient rich show notes for this episode. Cause we've got follow Sydney, the new murderous podcast. You guys have got a lot. So I want you to do your homework and click on all those links and be a good audience. Okay. Listen, listen to me. Good. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, and we'll talk at you next week. Bye-bye. Uh